Applecore Homestead. Today we're going to cover batch cooking riced cauliflower. But before we get started on that process, I want to put an end to a debate. The debate is to cook or not to cook prior to freezing. Typically, when you're getting prepared to freeze your cauliflower, you want to blanch it first. And that just prevents it from breaking down um, too quickly in the freezer. But with riced cauliflower, there's a lot of people out there that say, oh no, don't blanch it, otherwise it'll get mushy. So I've done an experiment to put an end to the controversy. On this side, we have not blanched, but very quickly sauteed in butter. So it has been cooked a little bit just to get those enzymes working the way that we want them to in the freezer. And this side has not been touched at all, just riced and put right into the freezer. And we're gonna go just head over right now to the stove and we're gonna cook these up and see which one's best. And that is how we will process them today. All right, meet me at the stove. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back, we're at the stove and we're just gonna see which one of these actually has the best taste and the best texture. I'm just heating up a pan here. We're gonna put some butter in it. There is already butter in this one. And when I smell it, so this one, the consistency looks really good. The color looks good. And it doesn't have a real sulfurish type um, smell to it. It smells a little bit more like just kind of cooked cauliflower with butter. And this one smells just like you would expect raw cauliflower to smell. All right, so we're gonna throw a little bit of butter in just to keep it from, actually, you know what? Since there's already butter in this one, I'm actually just gonna experiment and see how it cooks up without putting anything extra in it. And these are still frozen. All right, I have my stove on medium heat and I'm just gonna flip it you know, over and over so it doesn't get burned or just thawed out on one side. So what I'm really looking for here is, number one, do I need to add oil or butter to the pan since it already has butter in it? And number two, what is the flavor and the consistency? This is done and I'll show you what it looks like. It did not burn to the bottom of the pan, so I'm happy with that. So we're just gonna set this aside and we'll do a taste test after we do the other batch. Right. Now we're going to put some butter in the pan and work on this batch here that was just simply riced and put right into the pan and there are no other spices added to it. No salt, no nothing. Okay, so this is gonna melt really, really fast because the pan is still hot. The flame. Okay, we're gonna let this get nice and toasty and then we'll go over for a taste test. Here's the moment of truth. This is the one that was sauteed in butter for three minutes prior to freezing. This is the one that was frozen without anything, just put no, no blanching, no sauteing, nothing, just put right into the freezer. And But it has now been cooked in butter. They look almost identical, so let's see what the flavors are like. We'll try the one that was sauteed before freezing first. The flavor on this one is really nice. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a muted cauliflower flavor. You can taste the butter still, even though we didn't use any extra butter when we sauteed it today. Um, in comparison to riced cauliflower that has never been frozen before, it's just fresh, it's definitely more mushy. But it still does have a riced cauliflower texture. And I'm sure this is because it was cooked twice, right? Three minutes before freezing, and then to heat it back up here on the stove again. I don't think that leaving it on the stove longer would um, do anything good for it. All right, so now we're gonna try the one that was just frozen without being blanched or sauteed. This one tastes way different. So the texture's better. Not a lot better, but it's a little bit better. 
and it kind of has a little cauliflower aftertaste, which is not necessarily a bad thing. This doesn't have any salt or pepper in it, and both could definitely use some. But when you compare it to a fresh riced cauliflower, this is probably going to be more like the texture, but the flavor is just a little, just a little off. And believe it or not, this flavor tastes more like fresh cauliflower, um, even though it was sauteed first in butter before freezing. So overall, I think for me, I'm going to continue, even though the texture is not quite what I like, um, I think I will stick with this only because it doesn't have the weird kind of after flavor. I'm going to finish eating my snack, both of them. And then we'll start the process from very beginning all the way to the end. And if you prefer, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with just ricing it and throwing it in the freezer. I do think there has been some change to the cauliflower and it's not necessarily a really good change. So I'm going to stick with the original um, understanding that um, this that the cruciferous vegetables should be blanched be before freezing even if it's being riced so in this sense I'm definitely not going to boil the cauliflower ever in water for three minutes um, if I'm ricing it I think I'll just stick to sauteing it and I imagine that this would work beautifully with any type of oil you want I just happen to love butter all right after I eat I'll see you back here We'll get started with the whole process, beginning to end. All right, see you in a minute. Snack time's over. It's time to head over to the sink and get these six heads of cauliflower scrubbed up and get all the leaves off. Okay, let's get these um, leaves off and get them scrubbed up. So I'm sure it's pretty self-explanatory, but in case you've never done this before, I find the easiest way to get the head off of its little stalk here is just to take a little bit of the leaves off and then get a knife right in here in the middle and just cut it all the way down. Then it basically takes the whole thing off and then you can pick off the, you know, if there's any leftovers. And then at that point you can just break it apart. Now some people will say, oh, take this whole middle thing out, take all of these off. I don't do that because to me it's um, just wasteful and I like the texture and the flavor of it. And these are in really good shape. They don't have any brown spots on them. If they did, I would scrape those off with my fingernail. Or if you don't have any fingernails, then you can just um, pick it off just like that. Just, just to, like a shave it off a little bit. Because these are nice and soft. And these don't need to, they don't need the big scrubber. Um, in fact, if you use a, a big scrubber like this, you might lose some of your cauliflower and then just throw them in a bowl. Okay, they're all washed up and I have here a Cuisinart food processor that we're gonna use. It has the shredder attachment. I find that this machine is super easy to use. Uh, it does take up a little bit of extra space in my kitchen. If I had a tiny home, I would use something like this. Um, another good option is the box shredder, and I would use the large, um, the large grate. So we're just gonna go ahead and run these through. And they're just cut in like little size pieces that will fit into this machine well. And that's all there is to it. Just get them all shredded up and um, once they're shredded we'll move over to the stove and saute them in butter for just three minutes. We, we don't want to get them mushy or even close to being fully cooked. Otherwise it's not going to have that rice texture that we're looking for when we take it out of the freezer and make it for dinner. has been completely shredded. I have a pan here on the stove with medium heat and I'm just melting about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of butter. And this whole thing is not going to fit in here. 
obviously. Um, so we're just going to do small batches. We'll use about the same amount of butter each time we do it. And we only want to cook it for about three minutes, but we want the pan to be hot first. So um, that way we don't end up with mushy cauliflower rice. That's what we really want to avoid. But by cooking it, we're avoiding that kind of gross taste that the cauliflower gets when it hasn't been blanched in the, um, before it's frozen. So there's my bubbling butter. And I don't want my butter to burn, but I definitely do want it to be bubbling and hot before I put the cauliflower rice in. So I'm just putting enough cauliflower rice in here that I can stir it up real nice so that it cooks evenly without spilling out the outside edges and making a mess of my stove. And because I've done this so many times before, I can tell you that this is approximately one head of cauliflower that fits into this pan. And so we'll have to do this process six times before it's all the way completed. Three minutes just to saute this in the butter. And then I'll show you what we're going to do with it after that. Okay, it's been three minutes and this first batch is done. So I'm going to turn the heat off for now just so I can show you what we're going to do next. I have a jelly roll pan lined with parchment paper. I use the jelly roll pan because um, it fits in my freezer perfectly. Okay, so now all we're going to do is just put the cauliflower rice onto the pan. Put your pan off the heat so it doesn't burn while we're finishing this up. And just spread it out. Now, you can do this if you, I don't know if you watched my how to make hash browns video. If you did, um, this will look familiar to you. In an effort to save time and space, you can put a second layer of parchment paper on here and then a, another layer of the cauliflower rice. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and finish all the other batches here and I'll get right back to you. All of the rice cauliflower has been sauteed in butter. We did get uh, six pans. Um, obviously, I didn't double decker mine. I have the, the pans available and the freezer space available, but you could easily have put, uh, put consolidated this into two pans with three layers each with parchment paper in between. For now, all I'm going to do is get each one of these pans covered, pop them in the freezer, and I'm just going to leave them there for 24 hours. And then tomorrow, we'll break them apart and put them into meal-sized uh, freezer bags. I will be using a vacuum sealer for that. If you have one, great. If not, then you can just use um, regular freezer bags of your choosing. All right, well, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Hi, welcome back. All right, it has not been 24 hours, but it's been more like... Um, 18 hours since we froze these and they're frozen solid. Our last step is to break them apart and put them in a vacuum sealed bag. So if you watched my video on the hash browns, you notice that I used a very large utensil to break them up, but these are not as hard as hash browns and they break apart super easy just with, just with a fork. Now this um, this machine here comes with a variety of bag sizes. I'm using a roll, which I can pull out, and when I flip this, it automatically seals it. There's a built-in knife here that will cut it away. First thing you want to do is write down the date and the contents. If you did hash browns earlier this year with me, um, the cauliflower rice and the hash browns look nearly identical in the bag and if you have a hankering for potatoes and you get a mouthful of cauliflower you'll be a sad puppy. So I'm also because I sauteed it in butter I'm going to note that so I know what to do when I'm cooking it um, when it comes out of the freezer. Now just scoop up what you think might be an approximate size for your meals. 
So this is good for now. Put it into the machine here. Hit the, uh, the vacuum seal. And it does, it seals it automatically once it sucks the air out. Okay, and there you go. There are no sharp edges on this. And I have uh, full confidence that this will stay sealed um, indefinitely, or at least for a super very long time, until I'm ready to eat it in any event. So we've got six trays to do from the six heads of cauliflower, so I'm going to go ahead and finish those up, and I'll see you in a minute. We now have 19 separate cauliflower rice dishes for the future. Thank you so much for watching my video and going on this journey with me. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and have a great day. Happy cooking, everybody. Bye.